Hey, what's up guys? John here. TD Bank has just confirmed they are getting ready to lay off thousands of employees. Citibank announced just a couple weeks ago they're getting ready to lay off 10% of their entire workforce. The biggest restructuring at Citigroup in about two decades. Which potentially includes deep job cuts across the board. 24,000 jobs. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, all quietly laid off 20,000 employees. If you look at these five banks, they've cut about 20,000 jobs so far this year. So you do the math. Over 50,000 jobs quietly laid off in the banking sector in America so far in 2023. You have to ask yourself why. Well, it's because they're walking into the greatest rug pull in American history. The financial system is in a very, very delicate and challenging position that I think a lot of people aren't yet ready for. Here's a good example of that. In March of 2020, the Federal Reserve reduced banking reserve requirements to zero. Banks had to have zero money. No money on hand. They were just lending out money to consumers that had money from PP loans, stimulus checks, you know, 0% interest rates. Everyone was, you know, getting money for nothing, making money in stocks, making money in crypto, selling JPEGs, making money, right? That economy is over. And now banks are sitting there holding the bag on all of this. And because of this, I believe Janet Yellen, she was warning a couple months ago, get ready for bank consolidation. Get ready for this. Jerome Powell saying the same exact thing. Why are they saying this? Because they know the U.S. economy is walking into a massive stage five hurricane that people need to get prepared for. In this video, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate the people about what's happening in America. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item under credit for, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description as well as video. Schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow on Friday. Take a look at this. So, and this is shocking. TD Bank cuts thousands of jobs, takes restructuring charge, earnings miss. This came out this morning, 6.48 a.m., November 30th, right? So many people might say, ah, it's one bank, John, it's one bank. Let's look at what has been announced for banks over, let's just call it the last seven days. The last seven days to give you context as to how severe this problem really is. So British banks announced sweeping job cuts weeks before Christmas, three hours ago, eight hours ago, UK Metro Bank axing 20% of jobs, one out of five. Then Metro Bank targets 50 million, right? So the same bank right here, Barclays cutting 2,000 jobs, a $1.25 billion cost cutting plan. You know, Barclays also eyeing another 900 jobs this is six days ago, that's, that's two days ago. Then RBC Capital loses 500 staff. I mean, Toronto Dominion Bank, right? And China property, I mean, this is one in six pages, just for context, one in six pages with bank layoffs. Most of that information lasts 72 hours, right? So you have to ask yourself, why? Why are they doing this? Well, because they know consumers are in massive trouble, but they themselves are even worse trouble because of how they invested their money over the last couple of years with interest rates putting massive amounts of pressure on these institutions. Unrealized losses, U.S. banks up 22% to 683,900,000,000 in Q3. 200,000 views on this. I mean, look at this image here. You have to understand, this chart heading into 2024, Q1, is going to be an absolute bloodbath. You have to ask yourself, well, why? Well, think about this. Consumers in August of 2021 had $2.1 trillion in savings. Think about all that cash banks were able to lend out. And they did to cars, home equity lines of credit, you know, business loans, personal loans. They were lending it out left, right, and center. But now consumers are basically out of cash. December, mid-December, they're going to be completely out of cash, not factoring in student loans. 43.5 million Americans had to start paying their student loans. Average bill, $503 a month. So you start to realize consumers are going to start making decisions on who's going to get paid and who's not going to get paid. There are, many are going to choose to pay their student loans. Some are not going to choose that. Some are going to say, I'm going to pay my credit card. I'm going to pay my landlord. I'm going to pay, you know, I'm going to pay my car note. I'm going to pay these other bills. But banks are going to be stuck holding the bag on a lot of those liabilities. And because of this, banks know they're in big, big, big trouble. Year over year, U.S. bank profits down 4.6%. This is largely due to expenses for potential loan losses, which were up 33.2% in the last four quarters. The impact of the regional banking crisis is still being felt. Hedge funds are the least long financial stocks since you know, 2020, right? The least long 
these stocks. And experts warn that credit card debt crisis as potential record holiday spending threats in the uncertain economy. So, you know, National Retail Federation says 200 million, 400,000 consumers spent money this holiday weekend. They're spending money they don't have. Two out of three consumers do not have $400 in the bank, but 200 million of them are out there spending their card. And why? Because they think that everything is going to be okay. Because over the last couple of years, everything ended up being okay for the most part. You know, sure, it's a death of a thousand cuts for the U.S. consumer, but it hasn't been anything, nothing too substantial. But what I think is going to happen is I believe as these banks continue issuing layoffs and they start suffering more and more and more losses, they're going to continue to tighten up lending restrictions dramatically on consumers. They're going to look at every single loan with a fine tooth comb. That's what they're going to do. They're going to start to be really, really, really conservative with how they're lending out their money. And they're going to have to do it because you're going to start to see a lot of banks consolidating, a lot of them emerging, and a lot of them just trying to hold on for dear life, right? I feel like it should be a concern to everyone. I said, I save, I live below your means, think for the future. Scala from New Jersey said it's been difficult for younger Americans who are entering the job market like his son and daughter-in-law. They'd love to buy a house, but the interest rates are too high. I mean, look at what's happening right now with the job market. U.S. continuing jobless claims skyrocketing. And when you have $2 trillion in corporate debt that has to get refinanced, meaning loans that corporations took on, they took on most of which at very, very, very low interest rates in 2020, 2019, 2021, and it has to refinance at today's interest rates, the interest costs are going to be through the roof. And because of that, something's got to give, which is going to be their employees in most cases. It's going to be their office square footage in most cases. They're going to start cutting costs. So as this begins to happen, jobless claims are going to continue to rise. And as jobless claims continue to rise, less people are going to be able to make ends meet on their bills, right? So you start to pay close attention to what's happening with credit card debt, what's happening with the U.S. consumer. You're going to start to be able to connect the dots very, very clearly as to what is going on with Blackstone and these big private equity firms. They're sitting on so much money. Just under $6 trillion is sitting in money market accounts right now, waiting to pounce on distress opportunities. You think about it. If you were worth $100 million, would you go invest it in 2023? Probably not. Would you invest it right now? Probably not. What you'd probably do, maybe you put it in T-bills or something, but what you'd probably do is wait for there to be blood in the streets, wait for there to be a real, real, real panic, and go put your $100 million to work, buying up hard real assets, infrastructure, real estate, whatever it may be. But you'd wait until there's real panic. And that's what I think a lot of these corporations are doing. That's why they've been liquidating stocks. That's why they've been putting themselves in a really, really strong cash position. Because they know that when things hit the fan, people are desperate for cash. And when they're desperate for cash, they have to sell things at a horrible time to get access to that cash. You know, like for example, for right now, look at the real estate market. Interest rates are through the roof. Seven and a half, eight, eight percent, eight, eight and a half percent, depending on your credit score, right? How many consumers are out there looking to go buy a home when you could rent for half the price? Not many people. And so when you look at what's going on with insurance and taxes, those continuing to rise and interest rates staying higher for longer, you're going to have a situation where prices are going to have to come down. If you look at what's going on right now with home inventory, active home inventory throughout America, it's increasing month over month walking into the winter. When has that ever happened? Inventory increasing walking into the winter. Not recently, right? Over the last 10 years has not happened. Every time inventory increases, generally it's through the spring and the summer, not towards the dead of winter. That's what we're walking into. We're walking into a situation where home sellers are really looking at their house saying, you know what? Can I afford to hold on to this if the economy gets a lot worse? They're making decisions based on survival. And I think that that's why a lot of private equity firms, institutions, uh, and very wealthy individuals right now are looking at the economy from a, a position of strategic advantage, moving with the opportunity. That's what I think is going to happen. I think the next couple of years, if you position yourself well, 2024, 2025, you will make an absolute fortune. Even if you don't have that much money right now, with access to the internet, with you know a lot of opportunity that you have access to that maybe your parents didn't have, you know, such as Wi-Fi, you're able to go out there and kind of find a way in which you could supply a lot of value. And if you can do it strategically at a low cost, you're going to be able to put yourself in a position, low cost to you, you're going to be able to put yourself in a position to where you're going to be able to go out there and start buying up hard real assets and position yourself for a very uncertain future. What do you think about this? Drop below, we'll have a conversation. I'm betting on things about to get about to go crazy. I mean, look at what China just said. China state-owned CICC 
has just banned all analysts from writing anything negative or bearish about any Chinese company. I mean, November 30th, this morning, right? The company logo, CICC, China's first joint venture investment bank, has displayed a news conference on the company's annual reports, right? So you're not allowed to say anything negative about the, the Chinese economy, right? Not allowed to. Why would they do that? Well, it's because they know the floodgates are about to open up. Things are about to get crazy. But with that, as I mentioned, massive opportunity for the smart and savvy investor, for the entrepreneur, for those that are looking at 2024 and 2025, realizing this is your key to building out a moat of safety around yourself and your family of an insane new world that's being formed right in front of our eyes. Drop below, let's have a conversation about it. If you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself, what I think is going to be the greatest rug pull in American history, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow, for Friday. We'd love to help you. We'd love to see how we can help you on a strategy session. Catch you in the next video.